Is Brian Flores a terrible person and a terrible coach like Tua Tagovailoa suggested? Well, the answer is a little more complicated than just a black or white yes or no answer. First thing is you have to understand the quarterback position as a whole. You cannot treat your quarterback like everybody else on the football team because you coach DBs, you coach the offensive line. You have to handle and develop quarterbacks. The mentality, the expectation is completely different. It's actually the only position on the football field that you don't play. You play corner. You play linebacker, you play tight end, you play wide receiver, you are a quarterback. It's a lifestyle, it's not a position. You have to live it day in and day out. You don't get a chance to take breaks. You are the leader of the team. The pressure is on you. Everybody has to believe that when things get in a pinch, when stuff goes wrong, that that guy will fix it for us. That he will bail us out of any jam that us numbskulls get us in. And it doesn't mean that everybody else is not a good player, but the quarterback has to be the ultimate leader and the ultimate person responsible when it comes to winning football teams. Now here is Brian Flores' first biggest issue was the fact that he was trying to treat Tua like every other position on the field. And it's clear that Brian Flores wanted a different quarterback, probably wanted Justin Herbert in that same draft. And this is where Brian Flores needed to listen to J. Cole, love yours. Because if you don't love what you got, then you'll never be happy. Because at some point in time, yes, the neighbors, they're always going to have a hotter car, going to have a bigger house. Somebody's going to have something better. And you got to be content in developing and handling what you have to make it great. Because when they put Tua out there, they knew Tua wasn't ready to play as a rookie, but they got anxious as a franchise. This is ownership, general manager, head coach, everybody. They knew that he wasn't ready, but they put him out there anyway, instead of letting him sit and develop because they were watching Justin Herbert. They were watching Joe Burrow out there balling out. And they were like, oh, we got to get him out there. Slow down, fam. Slow down. It's okay. Don't put him out there just because everybody else is having success. Let your guy play when he's ready. And defensive head coaches notoriously have trouble developing rookie quarterbacks because their mentality is different. And you can develop a cornerback, a linebacker, a defensive lineman in a totally different way than you can a quarterback. And the expectations are different. So when head coaches have not had to develop quarterbacks previously, they are at a loss for it. Now, the defensive head coaches that have had success with it, they find an offensive genius or somebody who knows how to develop quarterbacks and just says, all right, let me stay out the way. Let me get out the way because my mindset is not proper for dealing with this one particular position. And this is why quarterbacks are paid the big bucks. This is why you have to have a quarterback developer because if you don't, you can have all the talent in the world. You can have all the skill set, the running ability, the speed, the throw the ball a country mile. If you are not handled and developed properly, quarterbacks fail. I want to give Brian Flores a lot of credit because he could have came out and been like, listen, I got no comment on that. That's how Tua felt. We're moving on. I'm the defensive coordinator over at the Minnesota Vikings. Got nothing else to talk about. But this is where you see a smart man and a man who probably at some point in time should get another opportunity to be an NFL head coach, specifically because of how he handled this situation. He said it hurt him. It hurt his feelings, but he's got to grow and learn from it that he doesn't believe that it's a terrible person, but he's got to take and honor what Tua said and say, look back in the mirror and say, all right, what could I have done differently? How could I have been better? And that's the mark of a man who can grow and be great out in the world. Because you can be great at your job. You can be excellent, talented, and all these things. But if you don't know how to connect with the people, and not just 98% of the roster, because that 2% of your roster, which is your quarterbacks, is your most important part of your roster. So if you can't relate to every position group and know how to deal with them or to bring people in to know how to deal with them and get out of their way, then you are going to fail. But Brian Flores, good on you, buddy. Good on you 
for seeing and realizing, oh man, I got to do something different as a person. Cause I've been through this as a dad where, you know, present, providing, teaching, nurturing, all these things. But when you got five kids, each of them needs something different. And there have been times where in me trying to be a good dad, in me trying to show up, trying to be, you know, all that they need, I have missed the mark. And that's on me as a dad to say, all right, well, listen, this kid don't get it. Man, you're just being too sensitive. You're being this, you're being that. Instead of saying, all right, I got to figure out how to connect with this kid better. I got to connect with my son, my daughter, my the older ones, younger ones in a different way and show up for them. And that's what Brian Flores is figuring out, that being a head coach is similar to being a dad. It's not that you're these parents' father, especially when you're dealing with professionals. It's that you have to understand how to connect with each of your players on a different level. So good on Brian Flores for that.